Okay, so I'm gonna go to oh my God. full screen for me. Okay, so there we are. So now um, for a simple phonetics problem. So let's go through the one, um, let's try something different. I know that all the things that I've managed to post are all related to Mendel's flowers with the purple and the white flower. So I'd like to start with something new, something different um, to give you a little bit of variety and practice with using the vocabulary. <laughs> We're going to start with our problem with squash, and I'm going to type it into the chat box so you can read it and reread it while I'm going over it, and then um, we'll give it a try. And I'll ask you guys if you want to join in, if you want to uh, raise your hand or ask a question, you can ask a question or answer a question. So. Squash. So I'll just read it. I'll tell it tell to you out loud as I'm going along. In squash, um, white, white fruit color is dominant over yellow fruit color. If A, if a true breeding white squash plant is fer fertilized by a true breeding yellow plant, what will the F1 generation look like? And what will be the phenotypes of the F2 generation? Question mark. Okay, so there's a lot of questions inside that question. So let's start at the beginning. And if you had already printed out sort of the step by step, you can refer to that as we go along. So the beginning part of the problem says, you look, read the first sentence first, and the beginning part of the problem says, in squash, white plants are dominant, white fruit is dominant over yellow fruit. So remember, I'm going to use the first letter of the word for the dominant allele as the symbol that I'm going to use in the problem. So in this case, since we already know that white fruit is dominant over yellow fruit, we would choose capital W to indicate the dominant allele. The recessive allele, the recessive allele, yellow fruit, I need to indicate that with a lowercase w. And I know you resist the temptation. The temptation is to make that a y. It can't be a y. It has to be a lowercase w in plants when we're talking about Mendel. That's how it's going to be on the test. And if I ask you guys to do problems and turn them in, I will expect that you use the lowercase of the same letter. Okay. In fruit flies and other plants, it's different. But for the problems that we're doing, uppercase for the dominant trait, same letter in the lowercase for the recessive trait or the recessive allele. I tell people all the time, just write it down. Put this right on the top of your paper when you start the problem and you won't have to try to remember it. You can just refer to what you wrote down. Okay. Capital W, dominant allele, white fruit. Recessive allele, yellow fruit. We're gonna use the lowercase w to indicate yellow. Okay, now, then the problem states, if two, say true breeders, if a true breeding white squash is crossed with a true breeding yellow squash, and I need you to remember that a true breeder, same as the P generation, they are homozygous. They are 2N, they're diploid, they have two copies of the same allele for the characteristic or trait. So in this case, the parent that is uh, the phenotype of the parent that is white, fruit, 
they would have two capital W's. Crossed with the phenotype of the yellow parent, sorry, the genotype of the white parent would be two capital W's. The genotype of the yellow fruited parent, a true breeding yellow fruited parent, would be two lowercase w's. Okay. Now, after we've written out the parents, now we can draw our Punnett square, which remember, you're going to draw a square. It needs to be large enough that you can put two lines inside of it, one horizontal and one vertical, to make false four smaller squares. Now, we extend the lines because in this area here, where I'm drawing the circles, in those areas, that's where we're going to put the possible gametes from one parent. And it does not matter which parent you choose in this case. You could put little w, little w here, or the capitals. Normally, people just go from left to right. So they use capital W, capital W, across the top and the lowercase alleles for the yellow parent down the side. This is the same. These are the gametes, the possibilities, at the end of meiosis, in terms of chapter 13, the end of meiosis that this parent can have either in their pollen grains or in the ovules. Then we complete the Punnett square. And to do that, what we're doing is inside each of these boxes, those are the new zygotes. Those are the offspring. So inside this box, we we put the two alleles back together in case this pollen grain met up with this ovule. You always write the capital letter first if it's present. And we do that so that it's easy, really easy for us to just glance at the square and figure out what they look like. Okay? So in this next box here, I would put the same. Right? I would put capital W, lowercase w, if this pollen grain met up with this ovule. I'm trying to account for all the possibilities. And I'm trying to make those lowercase w's look a little bit cursive so they look different because I realize the letter w, if you print it, it looks the same capitalized and in lowercase. Then to the right of the box here, we would write down the results of the cross of the Punnett square. So the F1 generation, what can someone tell me? What do they look like? What is their phenotype? Anybody want to venture again? No? Yes? All right, I won't call on you. Their phenotype, they are all white because they have one copy of the dominant allele. They have big W for white. What is their genotype? What alleles do they have present in all of their cells? They have both a capital W and a lowercase w. And that's how you would answer the first part of the question. The Punnett square and how you set up the Punnett square and this portion that you write next to it, right? That's demonstrating that you know how to find the answer. It's more than just saying, they're all white and their genotype is, F, is as an F1 is big W, little w. I need to see that you can actually go through the steps and solve the problem, right? Now, that's the, that's the first part of the question that I typed out. Oh, so, like say we've taken a test and we, we could use that like as an answer, like as our first part of our answer? You wouldn't have to write out all this stuff at the top, but if you had the Punnett square, if you mm -hmm. had written out the parents' phenotypes, the Punnett square, and then this over here at the left, the F1 generation, they're all white, and the genotype is big W, little w, that would answer the first part of that question. Okay, thank you. Now, let's do the second part, and then we'll do a couple more so you guys can, so we can all practice, okay? So the second part of the question that I had typed in the chat is, what will be the phenotypes of the F2 generation? So, I'm going to raise here. I'm going to leave my symbols up there to help us remember. 
And I'm also going to write as a reminder that my F1 genotypes were that, capital W, lowercase w. So the way that you can that you end up with F2 offspring or an F2 generation is by self-fertilizing an F1. So if it's a pea or a squash, you could just put a little cloth bag over it and shake it and it could fertilize itself. Because remember, angiosperms have both male and female parts inside each flower. Okay. Or if it was an animal, let's say a fruit fly, you would take the results of the F1 offspring, you would have the flies in the small jar, and you would separate out the males and females, and you would take an F1 male and F1 female and put them in a new house with fresh food all by themselves. Right? So that would be crossing an F1 with an F1. So if we cross an F1 with an F1, that's how we obtain the F2 generation, it, those offspring, those zygotes. So now, what is a genotype of my F1? It's all the same, big W, little w. That's what we just completed in that Punnett square. Right? So I'm crossing an F1 with itself. I would draw a new Punnett square. And now, again, I would, this parent, I need to put the alleles that this parent could possibly give in pollen grains after meiosis. So they might give a capital W, or they might be able to, they might have a lowercase w on the chromosomes in their haploid gametes. It's true that they would end up with four gametes, but because two of them would be capital W's and two of them would be lowercase w's, we don't need to put all four of them out there because it's just the case. The other parent here, same thing. They can contribute a capital W or a lowercase w. I'm going to pause for a minute and give you guys a chance to fill in the box on your own before I just write the answers for you real quickly because you can practice it yourself. It'll be probably a better for you when you do that. Okay, so we would put this pollen grain together with this ovule, egg in the ovule, and we would have two capital W's, right? Capital W with capital W. This offspring here, this zygote, we would have a capital W and a lowercase w. This one we would have capital W, lowercase. And then this last one we would have lowercase, lowercase. Now, again, on the right hand side of the box, to completely answer the problem we would put the phenotypes. So we're gonna look, we're gonna just go around just like I just filled them in the boxes. We're gonna go from box to box and write down what color the fruit is. So this offspring, when we plant the seeds and it grows and we see the flowers, this offspring would have white flowers. So we put um, a one mark, one tick mark, a hash mark, whatever you wanna call it, to represent these offspring show the white phenotype, white flower phenotype. This box with the capital W and the lowercase w, remember that one, if you have one copy of the dominant allele, it covers up or hides the lowercase, hides the other allele, the yellow allele. So this fruit would also be white. This fruit would also be white. This fruit is different. You see how it's a different genotype? has two copies of lowercase, two copies of the recessive. So it shows that it has yellow flowers, or I guess it was fruit we were doing, not flowers, sorry. And then you would say three-fourths of the offspring in the F2 generation are, have white fruit, and one-fourth has yellow fruit. Done. All right. And 
Will you be putting homework up or is it already sum up? They didn't see that. already sum up. There are homework, there okay. are four monohybrid cross problems, and I think they're labeled practice problems. And there is also a guide. It's called the how to, how to turn a <laughs> They didn't stop. if I spelled all the words correctly, but um, you guys look at that problem and think about it a little bit. How you can set it up while I erase and clean off my chart over here. Okay, so calls you in the problem again. One trait is dominant over the other. I would probably pick the capital letter of um, the word that's going to help me remember the easiest. Some people might choose an H for this because it's right handedness, but I think I'm going to go with capital R for being right handed and then a lowercase r for being left handed. So I'm going to use capital R for the dominant allele called right handed and a lowercase r to represent. Okay. So that's how I would start. And then, okay, so for every time we do this, we got to use the same letter, like no matter what. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I know the temptation is to change it to, a, to an L. Don't do it. Mm -hmm. Because when you okay. get to more complicated problems, that's, you're going to run into trouble. Okay. So I have a right-handed man. So I know that he, because he's right-handed, I know he has at least one copy of the dominant allele, right? and he's marrying a left-handed woman, what is her genotype? Because she's showing the recessive phenotype. What should I put here for the, for, the, for the woman in this marriage? What symbols should I give her? What letters should I give her? The little R's. The little R's, right. And you're right when you say R's because there should be two of them. So we can only have this phenotype when we have two copies of this uh, allele, okay? So let's draw the conic square. Okay. Right handed man, left handed woman. Put her over there. And their first child is left handed. So, if, how can they get a left handed child? Because the dad has a little r too. Yeah, very good. If, let's, I'll just go through it with you in case it didn't occur to you intuitively. If the dad was this, right, that's like true breeding parents, and all the kids would be right-handed. So because their first child was left-handed, that gave you the clue that he has one copy of that recessive allele. Now let's fill in the box. Comes there. And again, I would write to the side the phenotypes. What are their... What are the probabilities of their offspring for being right-handed or left-handed? How many of their children are probably going to be right-handed? It will be like 50-50, depending right. on how many they have. Yeah. So you would say one half or 50% right-handed and one half left-handed. Pretty good. Excellent. All right, so that's all, almost the length of what I can record. So I'm going to turn off the recording part and I'm just going to ask.